Hey guys, it's Danny. Today it is time for the second episode of our new series, Orchid Favorites, which is actually a replacement for Orchids in Bloom, it's just slightly different. So today I'm gonna show you the orchids that I personally really enjoyed over the past month. It's not all of the orchids I had in bloom, but these are the most notable ones. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about them and I hope you'll enjoy today's video. Also, we're going classic mode today. You don't need to see me for this type of video. It's all about the orchids. So before we start, don't forget to give this video a like if you end up enjoying it and why not subscribe? I post multiple times a week and it's completely free. But if you're feeling extra and you can, do consider further supporting the channel by becoming a member, checking out the affiliate links down below, checking out the merch or using the super thanks option below my videos. Alrighty, let us start. First off, I think my favorite this month is the Selogeny Usitana. I say it's my favorite, although I love all of the orchids that I'm going to show you today, because I do have a lot of history with this orchid. I purchased it as a seedling many, many years ago before I moved to Cyprus, so it's more than seven years ago that I purchased it, and it was very tiny, and I struggled a lot to recover it and keep it healthy and just start it off pretty much. It has been in a continuous state of setback, but recently in the past few years, it has done a lot better. Obviously, we also have blooms. Now, the party trick of this orchid is that it is a sequential bloomer. This means that it will produce multiple flowers on the very same flower spike. And what you see here is the first flower of the flower spike. You can also see a bud still forming. In my experience, I don't really get more more than three, four flowers, but it might be due to the fact that the orchid is still kinda young, even though it's kinda old in my collection. I will call it young because it has been set back. I also absolutely adore the contrast between the buttery white and the leather colored, let's say, lip. There is no fragrance, by the way, that's the only drawback, but overall it is a wonderful orchid to grow. I do think I have a basic care tips video about it, I'll link it down below. If I don't, I will be sure to make one. I honestly don't remember if I do, it has been so long, <laughs> way too many years. But definitely, I recommend this selogeny for those of you who have not had selogeny success up until now. They can be slightly finicky, particularly in hot and dry conditions. And guess what? I live in a hot and dry area, kinda. And I do still have success with this selogeny. So I do find it quite easy to grow. If you set it back, it's gonna take a while, but try not to set it back and it should be just fine. Also, it's not a rare orchid. None of the orchids that I personally own I consider rare, maybe except one because it's a very, very old hybrid and people don't do it anymore, it's not popular. Other than that, I don't have uh, rare orchids. Put it on the wish list. You should see it at some point in a specialized orchid nursery. Next up here we have Dendrobium parisii, another orchid which is fairly old in my collection. It's been a few years. This year it's blooming in July, which is not typical for this orchid, but in my struggles to contain thrips, I did grow these orchids in my IKEA cabinets. They tend to stay rather warm because of the grow lights, so you can see I already have quite a lot of new growth on it and flowers. Not a whole lot of buds, blooming very late, it all has to do with the lack of a winter rest that I provided. Even so, it still managed to bloom. This is a deciduous dendrobium, meaning it will lose its leaves before it flowers, typically in the spring. So the bird canes are absolutely normal. The flowers are really fragrant. They smell like raspberries, people say. I don't know if it's raspberries or another forest fruit, but yeah, I agree. It, it's along those lines. The flowers, though, do not last uh, they last about two weeks for me, but I do really love these dendrobiums, even without flowers. I keep them hanging, they're pendant, and they make for a beautiful houseplant as it is. The flowers are a bonus, but yeah, definitely I recommend the Parishi over the Anosmum if you don't have space. This guy tends to stay smaller than the Anosmum, which is a very similar hybrid, but that one grows a lot taller, or should I say longer? Next up, you would have seen this one in previous videos or pictures. Uh, this is Catlianthe Barefoot Mailman Rainbow. Maybe this is my favorite this month, I don't know. 
It is a wonderful cat. Yeah, what you hear is Raven. Raven is my baby crow, a little parenthesis here. I am fostering it until it's time to be released. Uh, wildlife rescue centers here do not accept crows. Long story short, I'm growing her out. Uh, she's wonderful. Probably in September I will have to release her. I already picked a spot. It's gonna be great. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna miss her a lot, but yeah, you'll hear her in the background because the doors and windows are open. Right, Barefoot Mailman. Uh, this is an orchid that again, I have for a few years, but it has hasn't bloomed so far and this year it's rewarding me with the most glorious of blooms. It didn't bloom so far because of thrips. The thrips ate the buds. Uh, but other than that, it just takes normal Cattleya care. It's not hard to grow or anything. I just had pest issues. But I'm so happy I managed to save the buds this year because, oh man, just look at those flowers. There is also a little bit of a fragrance. It's spicy. And when I say spicy, I typically mean peppery. Um, so it's not a wonderful Cattleya fragrance, but it is in interesting and also those colors are wonderful. The flowers are kind of tiny. They measure about three, maybe maximum four centimeters across. Um, and I'm curious to see if it can produce more flowers than this, but this year I'm in love with it. It is such a beautiful color, such an intense red on a yellow background. I just love it. The orchid itself is kind of medium sized. It's not a very big orchid. So it's perfect for those of you who have apartments or windowsills or small spaces to grow your orchids. Next up, let's look at the Brassavolas. First off, this is Brasso Cattleya Amethyst, which is a hybrid between my favorite Brassavola, the Cuculata, and uh, what orchid? Another orchid. <laughs> Another Calia. Oh, Calia purpurata. I was tempted to think it was Amethysta glosa because of the name, but no. So this is a wonderful Brassavola hybrid. I absolutely adore it and I absolutely recommend it. I see it's quite common in some parts of the world at the moment. I absolutely recommend it. It does behave and acts just like a Cattleya, just like the Brassavola. It has a nighttime fragrance. Some people say it smells like sunscreen and I totally see that. Sometimes I feel like it smells like a soap, but a very good quality soap. It smells wonderful in the nighttime. The flowers are pretty large. I think they measure around 10, 12 centimeters in length if you spread the petals. And yeah, it just looks like a wonderful Brassavola cuculata that has a beautiful purple center. I think it took the best out of both orchids. It is uh, kind of mess, not messy, but untidy if you look at it, just like the Brassavola cuculata, it creates very thin leaves that tend to become slightly pendant. You need a little bit of space for this orchid. It's not a tiny orchid, but it's absolutely worth it as a centerpiece or maybe as a hanging orchid. I love it and I think you would love it as well if you like Brassavolas generally and nighttime fragrant orchids. Next up here we have this orchid's parent. This is Brassavola cuculata. I recently tidied up and rejuvenated my Brassavola cuculata. It had some growths which died off because of all things. A mealybug infestation, but that's easy to treat. We're gonna talk about it another time. Brassavola cuculata, as I was saying, is my favorite Brassavola because it has long thin leaves. It's slightly pendant. The flowers are slightly pendant as well. A little side note, the Brassavola amethyst doesn't have these long not spurs, let's call them stems. The flowers tend to be a little bit more upright. The cuculata tends to be a little bit more pendant, a little bit more elegant in my opinion. But as you can see, it does have a whitish yellowish flower, which again smells very powerful at night. Absolutely love this orchid. I am so happy it's doing good now. It is prone to mealybugs for whatever reason, or it came with mealybugs, but now it's okay. Managed to get rid of them and it looks absolutely wonderful. Another Brassavola that I absolutely recommend to everybody. Takes the same care as Cattleya's and I believe it's very rewarding in the way it blooms. Next up here we have Epicatante Siang Yu Gold Coast. Might have butchered that name a little bit. I know some of you will say, hold up, this looks like the Volcano Trick. And yes, it kind of does if you know that orchid as well. I would say they're absolutely identical. I have the other one as well, it's just not in bloom yet. So I'm hoping to have them in bloom at the same time so we can do a comparison. I believe they're the same orchid. 
、um, or they have very similar parentage. But anyway, this is a small cat lea type orchid. It actually measures about 20 centimeters as a plant, and with the flowers, I would say maybe 30 centimeters in、uh, length. This would be about one foot. I'm getting to know my、um, imperial measurements a little bit better. This, as you can see, is a wonderful tiny flowered cat lea type orchid. It is a complex intergeneric. It has a lot of genera in there. And the flowers are produced in a wonderful cluster. I do believe I have about eight or more flowers at the moment. This is a typical type of blooming for this orchid. I would say it's about full potential, and I could not be happier because it's one of my favorite tiny mini orchids. They're all my favorites, as I was saying. This orchid is not very fragrant. I think I detect a very slight something when I stick my nose into the flower, but it's nothing to write home about. So I would not call it fragrant. For those of you who cannot stand fragrance, this is the orchid for you because it's tiny, easy to care for, and it blooms really, really gorgeous. I grow mine solely under grow lights, but you can definitely grow it in natural light as well, in bright light, filtered through a sheer curtain should be absolutely fine. I don't find this orchid to be very picky with anything. It's just the joy to grow, really, and being that it's tiny, I think it's very versatile and very friendly to apartment growers. Next up, here we have another veteran on my channel. This is Vanda Peaches, and I filmed it this time when the flowers are already a little bit faded. This orchid goes through a little bit of a color transition. It opens out a beautiful coral color, which is not a very common color with orchids. But then, as it ages, it goes into this beautiful pink, Barbie pink. <laughs> Yeah, since Barbie is a hot keyword at the moment, maybe I should title this video "Barbie Pink Orchid" or something like that. Hmm, that's a good idea. Anyway, it goes to this wonderful, really light pink that I do really, really like as well. I like the coral, but I like this pink as well. Now, this is a hybrid. It's not a pure Vanda. It's an intergeneric, actually, with a Neophenicia. But Neophenicia has recently been reclassified as a Vanda. Personally, I cannot rebloom Neophenicias, but I have no issue reblooming their hybrids with Vandas because Vandas are a lot more warm growers. In my climate or my environment is warm, so I have no issue blooming this orchid. It blooms once a year. It has a wonderful, sweet, kind of mouth-watery type of a fragrance during the daytime, and stays rather small. I have this orchid for a few years, and it didn't grow way, way, way too much because it grows slow. But that's absolutely normal. If you know Neophenicias, you know they tend to kind of grow more on a horizontal level. They produce more fans than grow in. In, uh, length. Well, it's the case with this one as well. I have yet to see a very tall Vanda peaches. Maybe it cannot actually grow tall, which again, it's great news for windowsill growers or people who don't have a lot of space. Next up, another beauty, another favorite. This is Brincatlianthe King Mean Beauty, and it's a wonderful Catlia orchid that I didn't see in bloom for the past two years or so because thrips. The orchid herself is doing great. She looks wonderful. It's a Catlia, and Catlias do great for me. But as is the story with many Catlias that I have, the buds have been eaten by thrips. No more. Now we have beautiful flowers that smell wonderfully of roses, and they do kind of look like roses. They have those petals that are a little bit pulled back. Also, the lip is a little pulled back. Wonderful red on a yellow background. It looks like a rose, absolutely, and it smells like one. I would say it's a combination of roses and lilies. It does have a bit of a spice in it, and when I say spice, I don't mean pepperiness. Uh, so it's a rose with a twist to it. Absolutely wonderful orchid. It can grow pretty tall though, and the flowers are now very big, maybe five centimeters across or so. But it's absolutely gorgeous. And if you like this color combination, pick this one up if you see it. I think it's wonderful. It can be a little tall, yes, but yeah, it's great as a centerpiece. I love it, and I absolutely love cluster blooming Catlia orchids such as this one. I have a few more. Hopefully, they will bloom soon. Monte Elegante is one of them as well, but it has a pink type of a flower. Absolutely love the cluster blooming Phalaenops, Phalaenop Catlias. Sorry. Most of the orchids I'm showing you are. Quite old in my collection at this point. This is Brasso Catante Sun May Gold, and we feature this one a lot on my channel. It is a heavy, heavy bloomer. 
It blooms multiple times a year, does not have a season. It grows very fast, multiple growths per year, per direction of growth. It can become big in a short amount of time. Mine is verging on specimen size. Two of the flower spikes that it should have produced this year are completely busted because of the thrips, but I managed to save three of them. Um, so the flower display would have been a lot better if I managed to save those two flower spikes. And I have another flower spike on the way because I have a tiny growth. Can you imagine? This is a wonderful orchid. If you want a big specimen type orchid fast, get this one. Flowers are not fragrant. Maybe in the nighttime or early morning there's a little bit of something because it's a Brassavola hybrid, but I would not count on it. Don't purchase it for the fragrance. Purchase it for the beauty and the sheer vigorousness of this hybrid. I'm telling you, it is one of the fastest growing orchids in my collection. I have it for a few years. I separated a few divisions. Um, I set it back at some point, but nothing can tear this orchid down. Just look at it, it's wonderful. Next up, another oldie. This is Lelio Catlea Boo Lady Sincorana. It has been registered in 2020, but I swear I have it since before 2020, when it was just Boo Lady Cross Sincorana, and that's all we knew about it. So mine is again in a bit of a recovery state ever since the Leka experiments. She's finally recovered. Unlike the one we've just previously seen, this one takes a bit of time to recover from setback. But anyway, it is a gorgeous orchid with a beautiful deep purple color and a wonderful fragrance. It's again slightly rosy, but it's a different type of rose, maybe a more fruity smell. You know roses, they're not all the same. And when I say it smells like roses, I usually mean it smells like the typical rose scent you'd expect. But there are so many variations of rose scents within Cattleyas. I don't know why. This one is one of them, it smells beautiful. It's not hard to grow, takes easy Cattleya care, can bloom multiple times a year if it's not set back, but mine has been set back, sadly. It is a medium-sized orchid, so if you're not good with tall orchids, this is a good hybrid, and it's actually present in flower shops here in Europe as well as in nurseries. So I think you should have some success in finding it. I hope it's still trendy. It was trendy a few years ago in flower shops, but yeah, just put it on the wish list if you like it. Next, we have Phalaenopsis bellina. I think the oldest orchid in this video, maybe nine years, eight, nine at this point, I don't remember. Eight or nine years old in my collection. And this is actually a keiki from the original plant, which just decided it doesn't want to hang around anymore. And look at it. Do you see any signs of the orchid fleck virus? Because I kind of don't anymore. So again, I'm full of hope. This orchid has a history of the orchid fleck virus transmitted by spider mites. So yeah, it's, it's a long history with this orchid. But now I see that the leaves look absolutely nice. They don't have chlorosis signs. And the orchid is very, 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 very vigorous. The, the keiki itself is more vigorous than the mother plant. It grew to this size within a year. And it started off tiny, obviously. So a year, at best a year and a half, and we have this. It's absolutely wonderful, it's blooming, it smells wonderful, and the leaves look nice. So again, I'm hopeful that this orchid can pull through and can manage its virus infection, which has no known treatment at the moment. We can only prevent virus or plant viruses. We cannot treat them. So my hopes are that it will recover because I have a lot of memories regarding this orchid. It has made the move from Romania to Cyprus. I mean, she's a fighter and I'm gonna support her as long as she decides to stay around. Next up, surprise, surprise, finally, I have a Phalaenopsis violacea. I got this one maybe last year or maybe two years ago. I think last year. It is the first time it opens. It is a different variety. It's a Malaysia crossed with met Metam Metaviensis. Yeah, there we go. Hopefully I pronounce it correctly. And it's really, really pretty. Phalaenopsis bellina and Violacea are both iconic orchids in the hobby. Usually people have both in their collection, but for a lot of time I did not have the Violacea because I didn't find one that I liked. But the Violacea is a staple because the fragrance is like cinnamon or very sweet and a little bit spicy. I forgot to mention the Bellina, the previous orchid, has the best 
Phalaenopsis fragrance of life. It smells very fruity, very mouth-watering. And yeah, it's usually hard to describe fragrances, but it's mouth-watering. The Violacea smells perfumey in my eyes. It's a very sweet, cinnamony smell. It's not so juicy. It's not fruity at all. And I'm happy that I have a Violacea as well. Flower-wise, obviously I prefer the Bellina, but I think this one is very pretty as well. And I'm happy I have both of them because they're both iconic orchids in any collection. They should be very, very, very popular because they have been in cultivation for decades at this point. We're not taking them from the wild, even though these are species. They are produced in cultivation, usually through tissue culture, so they should not be expensive and you should always find them at reputable sources like orchid nurseries, not necessarily individual sellers. And the last orchid we're gonna look at today is another Violacea cross. I bought it together with the other one and they do look similar, right? This is Phalaenopsis florescensis crossed with Violacea. And you might see the fuzzy lip and say, oh, this is a Tetraspis hybrid. No, no, I just found out that there is another fuzzy lipped Phalaenopsis species out there, which is the Florescensis. So this orchid is just like the previous one pretty much the scent is kind of like the previous one but a more toned down version maybe slightly fruitier it's not as pretty as the violacea but it is a pretty summer blooming phalaenopsis orchid i have a tutorial down below you should check the description all the time because i do have tutorials linked all of the time in all of my videos if you're wondering about a certain species of orchid just check the description i have uh, tutorials for the most popular orchids out there. Even if we are dealing with hybrids, they all take the very same type of care as the entire family, let's say. So yeah, not much to say about this orchid. It's like a Violacea, but a little bit different. Has a sweeter type of pink to it. Uh, but yeah, it's just really cute. Alrighty, so this has been it for today. These are my orchid favorites for the month of July. Let me know which one is your favorite because again, it is important and hopefully next month i'm gonna show you what i've been working on and i hope you will enjoy it too so leave me a comment there's no poll no need to vote but just leave me a comment below because i can tell which orchid is the most popular one righty so with that said thank you guys so much for watching hope you've enjoyed today's video and i hope you have a great day a little spoilers i might go into a little bit of a vacation um in the next weeks so i'm gonna try to pre-record quite a few videos but yeah i'm taking a little bit of a vacation with my husband so if upload schedule is a little bit wacky that's why i'll be back in a couple of weeks to normal schedule don't worry about that so thank you so much for watching once again i hope you have a great day i'll see you next time bye